What's up, everybody? Welcome to BCM. This is Michael, and it's been a while, but I'm back. Remember to like, share, and subscribe. Hey, want to join our Patreon family also? Stick around to the end to see what the experts have to say. I'll put a timestamp below, but first, I'll break down what I think. Saturday the 26th of June will be the night that we will see the return of X Lightweight Unified. Well, not technically, but in the eyes of the general public. Uh, and three division champ Vasil Lomachenko since his defeat by unanimous decision to Tiafimo Lopez in October 2020. He will be going up against a difficult and dangerous opponent in Masayoshi Nakatani. And the fight will go down in Las Vegas. Since that defeat to Lopez, Vasil High Tech Lomachenko has had time to reflect on his career, no doubt, as well as do some fishing and hunting in his native Ukraine. One thing Loma doesn't step too far away from is his training, which he keeps busy with, as he continues to master and hone the skills that have made him such a superstar in a world of boxing. All his accomplishments, in both amateur and professional fighting aside, his return to the ring will be a career-defining one because it will set the tone for what's to come for the rest of his career. It's always tough coming back after a defeat, especially from a defeat where you had it all to lose, and you did. Should Loma stay at 135 and be in contention for all the belts once more, he needs to start off on the right foot, and against Nakatani, his footwork will have to be on point. We already know how graceful and crafty his footwork can be, and against a taller and bigger opponent like Nakatani, his movement and ability to hit without getting hit will be the deciding factor in achieving a win. This was the same case in the Lopez fight, where I feel that Loma started so slow, was so respectful of Lopez's power and so predictable that Lopez was able to read and time him, that they were all factors in why he underperformed, in my opinion. Loma can't afford to make the same mistakes and exhibit the same tentative and hesitative approach against the rangy and strong Nakatani. Loma's record now stands at 14 wins with 10 by way of knockout and two losses, both by way of scorecard. Another loss, in this case it would be a back-to-back -back loss, would really hurt not just his confidence, but also his standing in the boxing world as a threat. So a win for Loma here is crucial. At five foot seven, he is considerably the shorter fighter to Nakatani, who is just under six foot. So Loma also loses out in reach by quite a margin. There's no doubt that Loma's comeback fight is a tough one, and he is at a disadvantage both mentally and physically. So it will all come down to ring craft, IQ, and the right fight plan. The question is, will he overcome? Masayoshi Nakatani. Yeah, that's a wild goose chase over here at Nakatomi Plaza. Everything here is okay. No, I said Nakatani, not Nakatomi, Al. Get the Twinkie out of your ears. Nakatani has done very well in his native Japan, winning the first 17 pro bouts of a total of 19 in his homeland, and with the majority of them by KO. His record stands at 19 wins with 13 by way of KO, one loss, and he has no draws. Hold the sun in them gables, polishing them tables, no draws. Fighting out of Japan, however, and against high caliber opponents has resulted in mixed results for Nakatani. In his last two outings, both fought in the USA, have resulted in a win and a loss. In his only pro career loss, which was against Teofimo Lopez, we saw a spirited, accurate and aggressive fight from Nakatani, who was able to land cleanly on Lopez and give him plenty of trouble. Despite losing by unanimous decision in the end, Lopez seemed to struggle with reading the distance and reach of Nakatani, and Nakatani's come forward aggression and good bodywork was a handful for Lopez. In his next bout, we saw Nakatani win by TKO over the Cuban Felix Verdejo, and this was despite going down twice himself in the first and the fourth round. The Cuban, now potentially facing life imprisonment or even potentially the death penalty, which I believe is technically illegal in Cuba, for the involvement in the death of partner Keisha Rodriguez and his unborn child, was sent crashing to the canvas twice in the ninth round of their bout. Nakatani possesses some power in both hands, and this is important because his jab and bodywork will be important in sending a clear message to Lomachenko, and that message is, you will get hurt if you want to fight me on the inside, which Loma will have to do. Speed is not a strong suit for Nakatani, but he mixes his shots up nicely and puts combos together well from mid-range, where he is most effective, 
keeping his opponent under constant pressure. He tends to get hit cleanly though and leaves himself open, which will be a problem with Loma, who despite his disadvantage in reach, will be able to pick apart any weakness in defense and guard when he is on the inside. In fact, Nakatani's reach will be a disadvantage as he often smothers his shots when fighting on the inside, which is one of the things that Loma will look to exploit. This is a great opportunity for Nakatani who wants to show the world that he can perform on a world stage and thus far has done okay. He will be looking for the upset, but I don't see it. If I'm wrong, I'm happy to drink a gallon of bin juice, but I think people forget that Lomachenko is a great fighter with masterful skills, and just because a fighter has a couple of losses on their resume doesn't make the fighter less talented. All fighters have an off night, be it the wrong fight plan, wrong matchup, or sometimes a better opponent, but a star doesn't fade until it's time, and in my opinion, Lomachenko's star still shines brightly. Before we hear from the experts, a reminder that if you want to show your support, you can like, share, and subscribe. You can help this channel grow by becoming a Patreon member, which comes with some perks. Check the description for more info. Life is a fight outside the ring, and if you are struggling with depression, anxiety, substance abuse, low self-esteem, debt, sleepless nights, and so much more, I can tell you that I have been there and I have some crazy stories to share. But more importantly, I turned my life around, and my experiences might help you to do the same. To find out more, you can check out my book, How to Get Out of Life Traps. It's available on Amazon. Just follow the link below. Looking for an opportunity to make money? That cryptocurrency is so hard right now! I'm not a financial advisor, but it's pretty obvious that it is growing in popularity and utility, and many folks think that they have missed the boat on cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, but they couldn't be further from the truth. You can mine Bitcoin on your laptop, PC, and mobile phone if they're half decent without having to splurge on expensive mining rigs. In fact, you can do it for free. This is not a paid sponsor. I would be in trouble with YouTube if it was and I didn't declare it. It's just simply a great opportunity in something that I'm doing. And CryptoTab can help you generate income. Click the links below and start earning money today.